Greetings and welcome to the Milu Project. Today we'll be discussing how language changes over time through a theory known as cyclical evolution. So, if you want to learn more about other linguistic theories that explain the way language is the way it is, your subscription would be much appreciated. Romance languages, languages which descend from Vulgar Latin, are quite different to their predecessor. As well as the vocabulary changes, they lack grammatical case and are a lot less inflected. These differences are mainly to do with something called morphological typology, how each morpheme is incorporated into words. This can be mapped out onto a spectrum, from analytical languages, ones with their morphemes separated out, to the more synthetic, fusional and agglutinative languages, with their morphemes bundled together. Take this example of change from Classical Latin to Vulgar Latin. We can see that the dative case from the top sentence has totally been erased in Vulgar Latin and replaced with a particle. This shows that Latin, as it evolved as a language, became more analytical and less fusional. However, the change from analytical to synthetic, or vice versa, is not easy. It's a constant battle between prescriptivism, how people in charge think language should be, and descriptivism, how the people speaking the language actually use it. Eventually though, language change is inevitable. However, some language features are more stable than others. Take the Indo-European ablaut feature found in words like sing. This feature has been around for thousands of years. In fact, most verbs in English had this feature although most have been regularised to the ED ending. Speakers also try to reverse this. For example, it's now far more common to hear wed rather than wedded. English used to be a lot more inflected. We had complicated conjugations for verbs and even harder ways of making nouns and adjectives agree. But somewhere along the line, speakers of English decided to change their language from a highly inflected fusional language to a relatively analytical one. But how and why do these changes happen? Well, it all comes down to people making small choices to regularise speech and try to make it either more functional or grammatical. For example, when using comparatives in some dialects of English, it now seems more grammatical to say more kind than, instead of simply kinder than, making the sentence more analytical. But, I am going to, for ease of use, has been shortened down into I'm a. So now, you might be wondering where English is going. Well, over the last thousand years, it's been getting more analytical but, in recent times, it's slowly returning to its synthetic roots. Though it's important to note that although some aspects of English are getting more synthetic, others, like verbs, are only just starting their journey to becoming fully analytic. This means that it will be a while before we all have to start memorising verb conjugations. However, English in the future could take a totally different path. It could merge with other languages, derailing it on its typological rails, or we might be visited by aliens and figure out some complicated, never before thought of grammatical systems. Either way, language change follows a cyclical pattern. Right now, English is almost fully analytical. So our next step would be to turn into an agglutinative language. 
one that adds suffixes onto its words to encode greater meaning. Although, the theory is just the theory, and we could end up with a polysynthetic language, a fusional one, or maybe even our own language family. Because even though language change is regular, you never know when it will churn another feature into existence, or kick one out. Thank you for watching. Join us next week for our video on language families.